we talked earlier about getting the audience on your side, so creating empathy or sympathy. I feel like I might want to try this sort of, you know, maybe when I go into the grocery store, I'll trip on purpose or I'll, I'll, fall, I'll do some, not fall, of course, but something to kind of like get me used to being in the position of, of wanting to feel stupid yes. about myself. Yes, what you're proposing is that you do something new and unexpected, break a rule. It's a rule, we might say, that you go into the grocery store and you behave properly and you don't trip. And you're proposing to break a norm. Maybe not a rule, but a norm. Uh, a, a, an exercise homework that I give to my classes whenever they run more than one day. At the end of the first day, I always tell them, between now and tomorrow morning, go out and do something you've never done before. It doesn't matter what it is. And it doesn't matter how you go about deciding what to do. The experience of doing something you've never done before carries so much creative value and so much psychic value that it's worth having just for the sake of having it. And I illustrate this, um, if you can imagine, I'm trying to think of it, uh, here's, here's a great illustration. Uh, one of my students was uh, divorced from her husband and had been for a bunch of years, and they hadn't had a really healthy dialogue since they divorced. And she took my homework as a permission to do the following new thing. I'm going to have a civil conversation with my ex and I'll call it homework so that it's safe for us both. And she entered into that and had a really productive experience. And I asked her later, how did you feel? And she said, well, at first I was really afraid because I didn't know what I was getting into and, and I didn't know if it was gonna work. And then when I saw myself in the moment and having a good experience, I felt really powerful. Like I'm, I'm in charge of this moment in a way I've never been in charge before. And then coming out of the moment, she said, I just felt high. I'd had so much an exhilarating experience of the new, that that in and of itself has value. So this exercise, whether it's uh, brushing your teeth left-handed or talking to a stranger on the subway or buying a, a stranger a drink in a bar, or talking to your ex-husband or whatever else you choose to do, there's so much excitement and discovery and humor in breaking the rules and breaking the norms. So I predict if you take yourself to the grocery store and stumble around like a clown, <laughs> at first you're gonna feel scared because all eyes will be on you and you'll be the subject of examination. Sure. But then you'll feel empowered because you realize I've got control of this situation. Like a stand-up comic owns the stage and owns the audience, you're owning that moment, all eyes are on you and you'll feel powerful. And then when it's over, you'll just have this sense of relief and exhilaration and endorphins and adrenaline and all of this stuff. I'm getting high just thinking about it. Yeah, let's go do it. <laughs> well, that's the thing that you said. You're really in control of the situation. So if I accidentally, let's say, drop the basket and, and the eggs fall all over the ground, then I'm legitimately, I'm going to feel stupid about myself. But if I, not that I want to do this, not waste product, but do something similar where I drop my grocery bag of something and, and it's not a major thing, but I'm in control of it. I did it on purpose. I think it's, a, it's more of an empowering. Not only that. But if you do happen to drop the eggs accidentally, you can absolutely make a surefire joke out of it and absolutely win the allegiance of everybody around you by using a comic tool called telling a lie to comic effect, stating the opposite of what's true. Those eggs hit the floor, you cross your arms and you say, I meant to do that. And everybody's on your side and everybody's laughing. Right. Because they know that you're not suffering the accident you just suffered. You can imagine, sorry, if I... No, please, please, please. You continue. can imagine. I've been, I've been thinking about this a lot. I'm writing a new book. It's called The Book of Practice. The subtitle is How to Do Better What You Want to Do Well. And one of the things that I'm looking at is this idea of uh, self-monitoring. I, I try to be in a moment and also be observing myself in the moment at the same time and just checking in at real, in real time, am I doing what I want to be doing now? I'm checking in with my hands and reminding myself, let's get those hands under control and don't let them fly around all over the, all over the camera. I know you don't care, but I'm self-monitoring. It's a goal that I have to keep my hands still. If I find myself not achieving that goal, if I'm actively self-monitoring, then I can course correct in the moment. Do you think about that moment in the, in the, um, in the store where the eggs go down? If you're self-monitoring, you realize you have a choice. 
you could take this bad outcome and make it worse by generating all kinds of bad energy around it. Or you can take this bad outcome and start to make it less bad by generating positive energy around it. And that's a choice you have every moment. And that's, an, uh, that's a choice you can access as long as you're paying to yourself, paying attention to yourself in the moments you're in. Well, is that part of being in the comic space is really dialing into who you are, your idiosyncrasies, and how other people see you? Yes, yes, exactly. There are a couple of things to think about. One is you have strengths that will be your strengths. And knowing what those strengths are and how to use them and leaning into them further is, is better for you. There are a lot of things that you just can't do well, comically or creatively. You can choose to do the easy things. You can choose to get better at doing the hard things. But there is a, a relationship between what is natural to you and what works well for you. And I can give you an example from a kind of a different perspective. As you might know, I'm something of a self-described expert in poker. That is to say, I've written 10 books on the subject, so I should know one or two things about it. And one of the things that I know is poker players at a table have an image. And that image might be a fear, fearsome image, a scary image, crazy image, innocent image, stupid image, playful image, a clueless image, intense image, checked out image, any of these things. For effectiveness in poker, you need to ask yourself, what image can I project that's in harmony with my nature? In other words, how can I be more me? So for myself playing poker, fearsome doesn't work. I can't scare people. But playful works great. I can disarm them. Why? Because I'm naturally not a fearsome person, but I am naturally a playful person. So that's an example of knowing something that's true about myself. First, knowing it. Second, owning it. Like, it's okay for me to be playful. And then third, using it as a tool. So if I can boil all of that down to an algorithm, know your strengths, own your strengths, and use them as tools. So don't try to become, you know, let's say in, in, in world wrestling, they, they all had donned these, these sort of, not avatars, but these, these sort of monikers, or I, I don't even yeah, know what you'd call them. I think avatar is a good oh, okay. character. Right. Avatar, yeah. And who knows if it's sort of a larger image of themselves. I don't sure. really know these wrestlers in person, but, but we come to know, oh, that's kind of an evil one, and everyone's booing and and hissing and stuff, and the other one's proud and funny. And so kind of like donning that almost. Sure. You're going to cast the heel according to who can play the heel naturally. And you can cast the hero according to who can play the hero naturally. This is something connected to what I teach when I teach stand-up comedy. You have a comic filter, and your comic filter is just who you are plus a ton of exaggeration. Uh, my comic filter is, the world is my circus. Everything that exists on this planet is here for my amusement. My rational mind knows that that's not true, but exaggerating that comic filter and taking it on stage, like, thank you all for being here tonight, you really made my experience. What's your name? Bob, you in particular. I was hoping you would come. <laughs> you can already see that I'm, I'm taking a natural playfulness and just jacking it up. And that's really, if, if you want comedy boiled down to simple terms, we've talked about some, but here's another one that works a treat. Comedy is drama plus exaggeration. If you just take a dramatic moment and exaggerate it, out of all reality, it will become comic. If you take a normal perspective, I'm a kind of a playful guy, and exaggerate it, I'm all playful all the time, I'm like insanely playful, then it becomes comic. It cannot help but. 